All right. What is up, my fellow moon catters? This is your boy Cat Dad. We are back for the third edition of the Moon Cat series. Um, here's my profile. I do want to make a little disclaimer before we get starting. Of course, none, nothing that I say here is financial advice. I would also like to mention that I am not a part of Ponderware. I'm not on the dev team. I'm just a community member who loves the Mooncat collection. I love what they're doing. And I'm here to help encourage those who want to look deeper into the Mooncat collection to use this as a resource or an educational tool so that you can find the right insight and make the right decisions and not get wrecked for some of the misinformation or just information that hasn't been uncovered yet. Because as we know, Mooncats were recently rediscovered back in March. And so there are a few years of uncertainty, which we will soon uncover throughout this series. Uh, today, I want to cover the official buying guides. This is a question that is probably the most popular within the Mooncat Discord, which is linked below. So uh, here we go. There's two Mooncat buying guides that have been officially written by community members or ex-community community members if you're NFT machine, which is a different story. Sorry, bud. Um, so I want to compare the both, compare them both, and then we'll go over everything as well, just to show you guys what is going on in the Mooncat community. This one was written by Dame, who is also a community member and mod within the uh, community Discord. So Mooncat buying guide. I went over where to buy the last episode. So make sure just click above if you want to go back there to make sure you know the difference between the adoption center acclimated and unofficial. So what to buy? The most important, or we'll just say the highest valued moon cats are those with low mint numbers. That is the first 3,365 3, cats. Uh, they're all, that includes rescue number zero through 3,364 were minted in 2017. As we know, there's a recent frenzy over 2017 NFT relics, and this prestigious class of early rescues falls into that place. And then you have 2018 cats, which there was about 2,000, a little over 3,365 through 5,683. And we'll go over the values and everything as well. Then you have 2019 and 2020. These become even more rare. I believe 2019 has around 90, 2020 has three. And so these fetch the highest premiums. Um, because we know NFT archaeology is becoming a little bit more popular with all these uncovered NFT projects and becoming rediscovered. History always sells. Uh, I used to own an antique store back in the day. So that's um, something that I know very well is uh, historical value. Character cats tend to fetch the second highest premium in terms of an overall sector within the Mooncat collection. There are character cats, there's Garfield, Cheshire, Alien, Pink Panthers, Zombies, Watermelons. There's, there's a whole chart, but these are some of the most popular that we will go through as well. Then you have the 2021 cats. This is the largest collection. This is about 20,000 or so, give or take a few hundred uh, moon cats in this specific niche within moon cats. These are all the ones that were rediscovered in March of 2021. Then we go on down the list and we see cat names, moon cats. They were the first named NFT. And some people decided to name their cats. Some, and this spans between 2017 through 2021 cats. Once they are named, they cannot be unnamed. It's irreversible. Um, then you have rare traits. We'll go over that. Genesis cats. These are the most popular. There's 96 unique black and white cats. There were, there was, an issue that happened when moon cats were rediscovered where there was a contract burn that had about 144 of them. We'll uncover that in a different video so that I get the proper explanation on that. Then we'll go over to NFT machines, moon cat buying guide to see what's similar. Rappers are there, character cats. As we know, NFT machine is a large Garfield and Cheshire collector. I believe he has 30 or 40 Cheshire cats um, himself. Good for you, NFT machine. You've been out there crushing it. Clones, this is something that was not covered in the previous buying guide, but actually has fetched a pretty massive premium, which we'll go over. Rescue year, 
mint, which is the low mint numbers. This is most important. And remember, guys, that rescue year and the low mint numbers only exist on the acclimated wrapper. The unwrapped wrapper or the unofficial wrapper does not display the rescue number or the mint number in the title. So you have to go over to Mooncat Pro and manually search it there, which is this itself, which I will go over. And then Genesis Cats, obviously 96. So first thing I want to start with is Genesis Cats. Obviously, if you guys, if you guys watched the first video I put out here, I sold the Genesis Cat for 70 ETH. Um, to get the proper valuation, this is you, GMC, GMC24. It's a bundle of 24 Genesis Mooncatch, which include 12 black ones and 12 white ones. I do not believe any of these Genesis cats in here are under 100 mint. Yeah, that one's 500. I believe they all range between like 500 to the low or high 2000s. I believe, I believe so. Um, because there are no Genesis cats that exist outside of 2017. So as we see, the market cap was, where did this go? The, mar the market cap for UGMC was 3 million. And so I did the math for you guys already, just to make this easier. I took the number 3 million, divided it by the Ethereum price, which is 3,037. Yeah, you see it here, which came out to 1,014 ETH. I then divided that by the 24 moon cats. So then you get a floor Genesis price of around 42 ETH, which is a pretty hefty price for 24 of them at the floor Genesis. I sold mine. Mine was a number 90 mint, so it was under 100. And as I mentioned, the lower the mint number, the more valuable. And it was also accessorized, which accessories were not covered in that as well. So that's something that, that there's been uh, Ponderware introduces new items and new, new, I guess we call them tangibles within the Mooncat collection, which could or cannot add value, but accessories are to be determined. So let's go over to the years, right? I said 2017 is the most valuable. If I have it listed low to high, and you can see the, the floor for 2017s alone are about two ETH, and then it continues to go higher and higher. And as you see, these are generally the 2000s because it goes up to 3364. So the 2000s in the mint number, you're seeing most of them are the, the floors. And then as you go deeper, any combination of those previous things mentioned, if you get like a character cat within with a low mint number, which is also a clone or some combination with a name that also adds value. I think the goal with Mooncats is you want to try to combine as many of these attractive features to, to fetch the highest premium. And so, yeah, we see that goes down to three and you see right here, there's only 1500 2017s that exist on the acclimated wrapper. The other ones are probably un unwrapped or wrapped which you see here, some of these are still listed, the low mint numbers, and you see the prices are pretty high, pretty crazy. And so um, they're a hot commodity. And as I mentioned a few months back, I was always under the firm belief that the 2017 class and the early rescues, which are 2020 and below, will trade in a separate, which is called say, a separate continuum or a separate space from the rest of the 21 collection. And as we've seen, people like DCL, DCL blogger go heavy and buy 20, 2017 cats. He also sees the value. So here we go, 2018. And guys, also I'm using accl the acclimated wrapper because as I mentioned before, in the unofficial wrapper, none of the metadata is displayed. So we have to do that manually and this would take forever. So you see the floor for 2018 cats are about 1.25. There is one for one. And then it goes back up to one and a half. And you see the numbers are between 3,000 to 5,000, which is when they ended. Some people are liking to accessorize it. This boutique item specifically uh, was, was a one day opportunity. So that will also increase the value. So that's 2018. Now we go to 2019. And as you see 2019, there's only 33 acclimated 2019 cats and two 2020 acclimated cats out of three that exist. So in the 2019 wrapper, 
there's literally nothing for sale. There is not one 2019 cat that you can buy. Somebody has these, they're hoarding them. They put the helmets on it. You cannot capture these anywhere. I do believe this is Mid Midnight Lightning's perfect 2019 Garfield, who is one of the developers. So those people who are interacting with the contract, which I'll have a dev or somebody come on, or I'll get proper explanation to that. And then as we see 2020, there's only two cats. Uh, we like to call these the COVID cats. This cat is actually my cat. So uh, I bought that for 15 ETH. As you can see, go down here, it is in my wallet. So we bought that, those, those cats, they went on sale for 15 ETH. The original owner put it in the unofficial wrapper for some reason, I don't know why, so it doesn't display what we bought it for. But when that price, when that, that recent Mooncat boom happened, the beginning of August or late July, uh, we went, and went ahead and bought those. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is the 2017 collection. Those are the low mints. Uh, next thing I do, oh, these are 2020s. My, I'm sorry, missed the biggest collection. As we see, the floor price for 2021 is 0.38 ETH at the time of this recording, August 18th. So you see the massive disparity between 0.38 and 2 ETH. So you're saying that the 2017 floor is about 5X what the 2021 floor is. And sometimes it goes even higher. I would say it ranges anywhere between like, 3x to maybe 7 or 8x and then once those premiums tend to appreciate or depreciate against each other then the other one will catch up or uh, increase its lead so that's also something to watch as i mentioned the, the second highest premium are character cats so we have a community member vidpet that actually put this together to make it a little bit easier for people to understand what character cats even are, which they are cats that just partake after some sort of resemblance for something in real life or something within the, the crypto space, which you see below. Character cats are completely subjective. It's based off of what uh, beholdens to the eye. As we see, Garfield's actually been a, a bunch of different shades of orange throughout his career. So this was decided upon upon the community. Again, it's all subjective. So you see it goes down to this is the hue color, the hue number, which you can search. The faces, this is the stars, because there's four different expressions. And then these are the amount that are available. So as you see, it becomes some of these character cats become really scarce, only 300 Garfields, which is a little bit more than the 2019 collection, but much less than the 2017 and 2018. And so then Cheshire, probably the second most popular. And as I mentioned, it's NF NFT machines most popular or most invested cat. This one is always debated upon highly because of Cheshire cats actually been multiple colors as well. So you kind of just have, have to go off this chart. Is it more blue of a skin? Is it more pink of a skin? Are the stripes more pink or more purple? 400 collection. Then we have alien cats. These seem to have been caught on recently to when this actual alien buyer or one of the alien punk owners bought like seven or eight alien moon cats and just kind of aped into it in the matter of a day, which was a few months back. Since then, they've really caught heat. So I would even consider alien cats the second or third most popular character cat or has been kind of over Garfield uh, recently. And then we see Pink Panther, a popular cat. And there are, there's a zombie cat as well. I just don't think it's loading. And then there's actually like a massive sheet that um, one of the community members has, which I'll display here, but you have to go into the Discord, which is located below to find out that complete list because I do believe that at some point, once people become priced out of certain character cats or mint years, then these other cats tend to find narratives strong based off of momentum. So if you want to pump a watermelon cat or a gutter garf or whatever these combinations are, then you could go ahead and start your own narrative. And so one of the other premiums are clone cats. And so i show you here. Clones, there's only 732 clone cats on the acclimated wrapper. 
I believe in total, there's only around a thousand, maybe a little bit more clone cats that exist. And what a clone cat is, it's literally the identical duplication of this cat that exists within the blockchain. As we, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but the IDs of the cats right here, the, the little hexadecimal, this is actually the DNA of the moon cat. And something that's highly overlooked is that moon cats are actually the first generative NFT collection. I know generative could be subjective, but I did get an explanation from one of the devs that there were over 4 billion possibilities of moon cats combinations. And then the person that was upon mint had the opportunity to siphon through and select. I may have butchered that a little bit, but I, again, I will have a clear explanation. As you see the floor for clone cats, 1.25. And what I see happening is people collect these clones and then you sell them as pairs with a premium or you just, some people just like having twins, right? It resembles something in reality where if you have a twin brother, twin sister, you're pretty identical, but here it's the exact identical duplication. And to just give you guys an explanation, we'll go in and we'll type in, we'll use Mooncat Pro, which was created by another community member. I'll type in one of these IDs, so 20, 2739. Is that the right one? Yep. So that's the right one. As we see, it has a badge and it's also a purebred. As you see here, one clone, one mirror, one twin. I know this tends to be a little confusing, but mirror is the same cat, just flipped on the opposite side of the spectrum. And uh, twins is something similar to that too. Um, I'll get a little bit better explanation on that. Uh, statistical rarity is something that some people take into account. I'm gonna be honest, I only really see the statistical uh, percentile um, find premiums within the 2021 collection, maybe because there's so many 2021 cats, 20,000 that those who are trading in that market try to find some sort of premium. And so the statistical rarity tends to be more catered towards the, the younger cats, which is no issue at all. And so we'll go in and something else I just want to show. So my 2020 cat, um, which there's only one of three, five, seven, five, six, five, seven, five, six, which I had no idea this was actually pertinent to 2020 cats until after I bought it. See, trait rarity is number three. So it's in the 0.01 percentile early rescue 2020. And again, there's only three 2020 cats. So I know the one, the other one that was purchased was trait rarity ranked number two. So my assumption, which I haven't looked, is that the one before that uh, would be number one, which so this, this is moon cats, guys. I know. There's also the boutique, which I briefly covered, but what I will do another complete uh, explanation video on the boutique itself. With the boutique and accessories, you could increase the premium. Um, again, the premiums tend to gravitate towards the 2021 collection, maybe a 10 to 30% premium. I'm seeing some of those buy again, because they're trying to separate themselves from the rest of the class because a lot of these cats look the same and it's pretty evenly distributed outside of the Genesis. So you have to find something that separates yourself. That's why I kind of like the accessory addition. And also when you're playing games like Cuddle, there's a leaderboard. So it just adds a, some more unique features to the cats. So I just want to make sure that we covered everything. Oh, cat names, which you can see here. Let's see. Names. I don't think we see any names for sale right off the bat, but let's see if I just do this, you could see some of the names. Mr. Moo, this is also my cat, which uh, was covered a little bit briefly in the first video, which I traded for. This is the first named cat. I think that the, na the named cats within the early collections, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, are going to see a massive premium in the future because they were these names were created back in a time where nobody knew really what was going on or if they had a premium or not and so yeah this is the first cat census which just sold recently 
also the first named Genesis cat. So there are a bunch in here. And there are there have been some people that I've noticed that in the 2021 collection, they've, they've been unwrapping their acclimated cat, naming it something, and then going into the accessory store and accessorizing it based off of the name that they've given it, which, a bit, which has been pretty cool to see, just adding more unique characteristics and traits to it. So I think, I believe for now, this is everything in terms of valuation. I did for the cuddle, for the game cuddle, which I covered in the last video. There have been some people who've been selling their cats at a little bit of a premium based off of the level that their cat was in terms of the amount of cuddle that it could mine. I recommend you guys to go look into the game. Although there is a current pause right now, which I'll, I will cover in another video. So I just want to say best of luck to everyone out there. If you enjoyed this video and made it this far, please make sure you go down and like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, if there's anything that I messed up on, or if there's any other rating metrics that you believe I missed or should be something that people should look at in the future. Long live the moon cats. This is Cat Dad checking out for episode number three, and I will see you guys next time.